they never never really disappoint so uh it should be exciting in this matchup so let's look at phillips side of the matchup first year for poland needs a victory here to try to start the uh start the steam roll in the other direction for poland's end and he thinks don dozo is the train that will lead him to victory Hey, Don Dozo Tatsugiri, that is the combination that has been sticking around since the beginning of Scarlet and Violet that never seems to really go quite anywhere. And this is such a strong core of the team, of course, having that Glamora to be setting up that toxic debris to get the toxic spikes down or that mortal spin to just be able to manually poison. That way you can kind of sit there with that Don Dozo tank these hits and having a tanky option like the Iron Hands as well is super, super nice. And then Fluttermane and Chiyu, I mean, it's the it's the duo. Come on. This is just a scary team to be going up against. And with Philip, I mean, this list of accomplishments too, maybe not that first place spot, but getting top fours in places like Liverpool, I think is fantastic because there's a lot of strong competition out there. Yeah, definitely making Team Poland proud with those performances, and we'll see if Don Dozo is going to be able to uh, be the steady strategy. I think the Glamora throws a wrinkle into this as uh, on the other side, we're going to see that there is certain Pokemon that have access to you know picking up those mortal spikes. However, the Fluttermane not having the choice spec since Chi Yu is holding the item gives it more flexibility with its booster energy and icy wind uh on it to slow the enemy team down. Yeah, the adjustment into having this booster energy onto the flutter main to be able to not only switch your options uh of attack, not just being locked into that first thing that you pick and picking up icy wind, I really really like giving you a way of speed control as opposed to having to rely on just having these naturally speedy pokemon or dedicating a slot onto your team to something like a tailwind with this torn or whatnot. So this icy wind flutter main and then being able to have that choice specs onto the chi yu that is just looking to be honestly this little fish that could out there having the beads of ruin having the choice spec having the most damage is just really nice yeah and you know as we as we mentioned philip having a great 2022 season for uh in eu i should say has been playing since 2021 in the world cup and poland is actually had in 2021 they faced off against china in the world cup uh, in the group stage prior and back then it was actually a seven to one victory for china so philip trying to get that first win for poland and hopefully uh the rest of poland can even out the matchup as they've played each other for now the second time in world cup history we head over to changjin pang's side for team china salt lake city regional champion back in 2022 people like to call him the the chartizard player which kind of took salt lake city by surprise with that charty berry charizard uh and you look at his team might be very familiar to what we just saw last round and also what we saw paul chua bring to toronto yeah and it there's a Quite a few Pokemon that we get to see kind of be running their course through the meta, but a different looks on a couple of different things. So looking specifically at the Fluttermane, since we did call out on Philippe's side how his Fluttermane was built. This one, we are going to be seeing the choice specs. Three of the moves, a little bit more atypical, but the Parish Song, of course, being able to set that up, get out. Having a late game option like that is really, really nice. And of course, having options into this Dondozo Tatsugiri Glamora with this Amoongus is really nice, especially too with that Rocky Helmet. Sometimes we get to see the Citrus Berry instead, but taking a significant amount of damage every time you target into this with something like an Order Up can be huge. Yeah, and so one of the men the Pokemon I mentioned on the other side that uh, can deal with the Toxic Debris would be Amoongus as a Poison type. If Chungjin's able to switch it out, switch it back in, can get rid of those Toxic Spikes. So obviously that's going to be important for Chungjin in this matchup, as well as the Dundos are not being Terra Grass or having safety goggles as a way to stop the spore coming out from Amoongus's end. But one thing I think that's really interesting here, Sierra, is you look at the terrestrialization options on Chungjin's end, there's technically only three Terra types available. Landers and Roymoon are flying, Amoongus and Iron Hands are water, and Fluttermane and Heatran are fairy. So it might not have as much dynamic options in uh, in this matchup since there's only three potential Terra types you can switch into. But, uh, you know, maybe Dundos is not the most dynamic matchup to begin with anyway. <laughs> hey, you might be onto something there. You might be onto something. And now looking to continue China's dominance in World Cup so far. I mean, Chong Jun, he has been on an absolute tear. It's a little bit of a wrinkle in that week one, but it's been two owing every other week. Let's 
see if he can do it again heading into this game one. Right away, we are going to be seeing such a powerful core of Pokemon coming out. This Fluttermane and this Chiyu can exert such pressure, especially hitting into something that Amoongus, being able to eliminate that right out of the gate would be so handy. And Philip Idchek having the all of Poland rooting for him right now as they are currently down 0-0-4, I should say, to China. So if they lose this match, effectively that would win the week for China. And Chengjin is definitely no slash of an opponent, so it's going to be a tough uphill battle, Sierra. Oh, 100%. And with this two Pokemon as a lead, you can just put on so much pressure with just attacking. Anything that might be wanting to swap in on the other end is already going to be taking a heap of damage thanks to just the natural ability to be able to hit hard with this Fluttermane next to that Beads of Ruin. The Fluttermane over on Changchun's end, swapping out Heatran coming in. This is something that can definitely take one of these hits better. Yeah, Heatran with Flash Fire would be immune to a Heat Wave coming in that direction. And then, of course, Dazzling, Green, Dazzling Gleam resisted <laughs> as a Steel type. So an excellent switch from Changjin here as he takes effectively no damage because that Dazzling Gleam hardly did anything. And then this Heat Wave actually will boost up his Fire type moves damage from the Flash Fire. Among is protecting itself, but the question is for how long? That's exactly it. The Amoongus still in the next turn would not quite appreciate anything that this heat Heatran could throw away. But the issue is now over on Philippe's end. You do not want this heat Heatran to be firing off something like a powerful Earth Power into your own Chi Yu. So you do have to kind of respect that a little bit going into this. As this heat Heatran, even with the Flash Cannon, sometimes we get to see that dropped in certain situations. It can really take its pick on which Pokemon it wants to be targeting into. But here we're going to see our first Terrestrialization the Amoongus to make sure it's not about to get bodied by a heat wave. Well, that's one way to protect Amoongus. One other one could have been switching it out into something else, but of course, whatever switches in would have to take a really hefty heat wave on the switch. So instead, Terra Water Amoongus making it resist this heat wave and giving the Flash Fire again over to Heatran, just not caring about the Heatran slot as Flash Cannon goes into Fluttermaster Check. So in theory, Philip doesn't lose too much from clicking heat wave there however his little fish shall be put to sleep because of that spore yeah the chi yu it being that choice specs not being able to lock into anything like anything other than this heat wave really easy call on chong Jin's end to just go for that terrestrialization knowing that hey there's either going to be the swap and something else is going to be falling asleep going into this switch considering that there is no spore resist options over on Sleep's end so definitely a nice call nice read into that and the flutter main now you don't want to risk just sticking around and getting flash cannon so definitely a little bit on the back foot yeah definitely a difficult position that philip is in that his chi yu one of his main sources of damage has been put to sleep and instead of burning that first turn of sleep got to make sure to remember when it comes back in has to take that first mandatory turn of sleep Dondozo switching in on this turn and Flash Cannon goes onto the Fluttermane, bringing it down into the red, but not enough for a one hit KO. So this Amoongus will just spore it. I imagine Fluttermane might not get another attack off in this game since it's such low health at this point. Yeah, you get to keep your Fluttermane around thanks to the fact that the Beads of Ruin was swapped out. So yeah, that Chi Yu not being able to burn that turn of sleep is going to be a little bit detrimental later on, but you get to keep your Fluttermane. But at what cost? Now you have this Fluttermane out onto the field. That is now asleep. You have the Dondozo there too. You do have access to Earth Protect here, so maybe you can try and burn that turn of sleep. If you get KO'd, you then get a free swap into the Tatsugiri to start trying to be rolling damage that way. So there is a couple of different options here, but Zamungus has definitely been putting in work so far. And I wonder on Changjun, then, do you even try to target down the Fluttermane because you know that it could either one switch straight into the Tatsugiri, which is exactly what Philip goes for, so you're gonna miss the attack there. Or you kind of wanted it to stay on the field and wasting that slot. But instead, Philip being a little more aggressive, getting Tatsugiri in with his two Pokemon sleeping in the back that have not taken a sleep turn yet on either Fluttermane or the Chi Yu. So this is effectively a 4v2 right now until those Pokemon in the back wake up. Amuga switching out on this turn though means that it's not going to be on the field to try to spore Don Dozo. Instead, Fluttermane will switch into that slot. The order up though, however, goes right into that fairy type doing no damage and now Heatran can go for another power, which as you can see is hardly 
any mu a really tickling Dondozo. <laughs> See, with the Amoongus there too, sure, it would have been taking the brute force of that hit, but being able to swap in the Splutter make, make sure that this order up is not going to be doing any damage as well as you're not going to get any boost from it. Really, really nice way to be neutralizing this Dondozo that might be wanting to be setting up kind of further on at this point. And it is such a tough position for Philip, knowing too that once this Dondozo is done, two Pokemon in the back are sleeping. So this Dondozo, it has to start making waves at this point in the match. Even just if firing off an Earthquake into these Pokemon to try and be doing some damage into that, what would have been a super effective heat drive. We'll see the swap though. Well, making waves, it just might do. It does have access to the wave crash and that will go towards Fluttermane is enough for a one hit KO. So Chungjin has lost to Fluttermane in this game one. Iron Hands does get to swap in for free, however, and this does let Chungjin bring either the Heatran or Amoongus back onto the field. Getting the free swap at this point too will be super, super nice, especially since you can be threatening into this Dondozo with either a powerful attack, something like that wild charge, or even just go for right away at Baco to make sure that it can't be setting up further, making sure there is that force of the protect. Dondozo doesn't necessarily hate protecting, I think in this case, since you are gonna be running that leftover set, you'll be able to get a little bit of recovery, but with Amoongus back on the field, this is the score pressure into the Dondozo, and with the Dragon Terrestrialization, there's not really a way to avoid that in subsequent turns. Yeah, Dondozo will protect this turn to avoid the fake out spore combination that Chungjin has on the other side. And yeah, at some point, Sierra, we would imagine the Terra Dragon to come out because the main the main weakness to that of Fluttermane has been knocked out on the other side. So if you change into a dragon typing, now you're not weak to wild charge anymore. You're, you know, probably having a better matchup into the rest of what Chungjin has on the field. Yeah, being able to at least resist the hit so maybe you can serve off the turns of sleep that might be on the horizon here, definitely nice. So being able to get rid of that Flutter main and target it down, definitely nice. You can also be pressuring with the order up and be looking at hitting some some additional boosted damage here as we will see that Terrasalization come out. Yeah, Terra, Dragon, Don, Dozo. I feel like we're going all the way back to regulation A at this point. Right. We use that. <laughs> Haven't seen this too much, but you get even stronger order up because it's a dragon attack here. So that is into the Iron Hands, looking like a clean two hit KO potentially, as especially after the attack raising from order up. But the question is, will it be able to get any attacks off for the rest of this game as Moongus is primed and ready to click Spore and put down Dozo to sleep? Yeah, it looks like it's, a lot of this is going to be coming down to the sleep turns on to the Dondozo. It is going to be able to recover that leftovers and having that additional attack boost on top of the previous commander boost. Once you're out of the sleep, you can be dealing some damage and bringing that Iron Hands down already so much damage and getting an additional attack boost. Prime time to start firing off some earthquakes and dealing some fantastic damage. And this drain punch in return is doing so little. It's going to be the littlest of health built up at this point. If they can build up enough to be living the next hit, that would be good. The pollen buff, though, from the Amoongus, well, that's going to bring it back up to full. Yeah, that's going to make Iron Hands way healthier at the end of this turn than where it started. Dondozo at roughly half HP, taking that first turn of sleep. Philip deciding not to try to go for the Protect, decided to save off from some of the damage instead, wants the turn to wake up and going for... Remember, this is a plus one Earthquake. It is spread damage, I understand, into Iron Hands, but it should be pretty strong. A little bit more than that. You got the Commander Boost, you're getting your Order Up Boost. You should be able to start dealing some damage if you can just wake up. That's pretty much, I think, going to be the name of the game now when you're looking over on Philip's end on how this is going to go. And that first turn is like, first capable turn of waking up, it ain't it. No, it will not. Dondozo is brought down to under half HP thanks to the Drain Punch from Iron Hands. And there's the Pollen Puff looking like just does almost as much, <laughs> which I don't know if that's his Iron Hands is weak or if Amoongus is strong since they're doing the same amount of damage to the <laughs> Dondozo. But now uh, we're just in the same waiting room right now, Sierra, of, of waiting for Dondozo to wake up and looks like kind of hovering over the decision to make of order up or clicking the earthquake to spread damage. 
thing is, is hitting into that earthquake but not picking up the KO. So it could take potentially a lot of damage in return. I do really like this protect. At this point, the Iron Hands is already up to full. So it's not like you're going to be doing too passive of a turn and letting them get a little bit more ahead than you are. So being able to go for the protect, not take any damage, not take the score this time around, and get a little bit of that valuable leftovers recovery is super, super nice. That will be the attempt at a score in case Willow did go for the attack coming out from Tongjin's end. So I feel like the Amoongus might be enemy number one headed into this next turn. Yeah, for sure. And into the next game, because obviously this is a best of three, so might have to make some adjustments along the road if some of those Pokemon are just a little too difficult. If Amoongus has put three of your four Pokemon to sleep, and it's an absolute detriment to your strategy. You might have to adjust for that in the rest of this series. But Heatran will switch into that Iron Hand slide. Order Up is the attack of choice into Amoongus, knocking it out. So I'll give you another attack boost, and he can't get put back to sleep anymore. Being able to get rid of that score is absolutely huge. So that's going to be another attack boost going on to the Dondozo. And not taking any damage this turn, you're going to be taking a little bit more of that leftovers recovery. So priming yourself to be in just a little bit of a better and better spot going on forward. Now with the reintroduction of the Iron Hands to the field, this could be just that potential for an easy fake out, which means an even easier protect over on Phillips' end. Yeah, for sure, because even if... Even if he doesn't go for the fake out, you know at least on this turn you can protect up and get a little bit of leftovers recovery because at this point, Phillip's win condition is the Dondozo, so it needs as much HP as it can. Heatran doesn't have anything super effectively uh, to target down this dragon typing either, so uh, every little bit of every little bit of hit points matters, Sierra. Oh, 100%. And notably, too, over on Chongjin's end, because of the fact that the Amoongus has terrestrialized, that Heatran was not going to breach anything. So, kind of noting that, that will be the towel thrown in, and Philip to be taking that first match. That looks dangerous after all the spores right <laughs> off the bat to the Flutter Rain, to the Chi Yu. But Dondo's a Tatsugiri. There's a reason it stuck around so long. So let's see what happens here in game two as we are. You know, ready to head over to the game. It's going to be Iron Hands Fluttermane for Chung Jun's side. And then there actually is an adjustment here with Glamora and Iron Hands. So we know at least Chiyu or Fluttermane has not come to this game. Considering how well it was stopped going on in that first game, despite how deadly that combination could be, I really do like this change as well. And Glamora targeting into it when you're looking at something like the Iron Hands over onto Chongqing's end, that could be setting up the toxic debris to be poisoning anything coming on forward. And if you're predicting that the Amoongus necessarily wasn't a break, it could be something that is sticking all the way around. So I really, really like this. You already got to see how far ahead he was with just the Don Dozo. Now imagine two Pokemon not going to sleep to start things out. And fake out from... Chungjin's Iron Hands goes into the other slot. There's the Moonblast, and it does not pick up the knockout. Iron Hands living on 20 HP. Gamora with a Mortal Spin connecting onto both of Chungjin's Pokemon and poisoning them there. So a crucial survive from the Iron Hands for Philip because now he can stick around, obviously, for another turn. Might want to maybe switch it out for, for later so you can get some fake out potential later on, or might just let it go down since uh, you don't want Dondoza to take unnecessary damage. That's the thing. Your Iron Hands lives, which is all nice, but it didn't really get to do much. And just as simple as Azuline Gleam coming out from Punctures End can be picking it up at this point, considering that it's not necessarily the fastest Pokemon around. You could just keep Punctures honest at this point and just target anyways. That way it's, hey, you do have to target into me. You can't just be doing a powerful Moonblast. Moonblast, though, into the Iron Hands, so not opting to swap will take the hit. Does mean that nothing else coming in is going to take that attack. And here's Gamora with its Sludge Bomb, only a neutral hit into the Flutter Mage, so it doesn't do too much damage. Drain Punch will bring Iron Hands back up healthier than it was before there, but because of Gamora's ability, the Toxic Debris will be spread around onto the field, so it's really crucial that if Chungjin did bring Amoongus in this matchup that that's the first pokemon that he switches in to pick up those toxic spikes 
And now we get a little idea of what's in the back that John Dozo and Tatsugiri. I would imagine, considering how this combination fared the first game around, but the confirmation of it as the Dondo now, Don Dozo now hits the field. You could be even looking at a Tatsugiri swap in on this turn, considering that you have already poisoned the Pokemon on the other end, and then you can have the Glamora in the back for the later game sweep up if the Dondozo does end up fainting at any point. So I'm definitely not opposed to that whatsoever. You start firing off some powerful attacks. And this Fluttermane, sure, it took the last hit really, really well, but Poison, it's already down in the yellow. It doesn't look like it's too long for this world. So that's gonna be a really nice swap coming out. And in the Fluttermane will switch out into the Amoongus, which is perfectly timed as a Poison type will pick up those Toxic Spikes so that they can't, Gamora cannot poison his fourth Pokemon who we have not seen revealed yet. But there's the Tatsugiri switch in. Definitely a, uh, a, a tailor-made play to switch Tatsugiri on this turn, making Dondozo even stronger thanks to its commander ability, boosting all of its stats by two stages. And you're in the same position that Chungjin was in in game one, where you have Amoongus and Iron Hands on the field. And even if Amoongus is able to put Dondozo to sleep at some point, in this match, it's who is next to Amoongus that can actually threaten. And the answer is Landorus this time around. So Heatran was not brought in this game. Landorus is the adjustment. Intimidating Dondozo, but the wave crash still goes through into a ground type. Landorus is down. It's making the shortest appearance on the field and instantly eliminated from play. That'll be a bunch of recoil damage, but already Don Dozo has made the biggest impact going into this. So now that's going to be a position. Yeah, you got the Amoongus in safely, but at the same time, it'd be such a tricky spot. You're going to be able to bring the Iron Hands back in at least to have this fake out, but still, that swap in hurts. Yeah, because now at what point, what does Chungjin terrestrialize? If he goes for Amoongus yet again, sure, you have the water typing, but you're not having much damage. And Fluttermane, the big damage dealer, is already down to about 25% HP and has poison ticking on its end. But the Landorus was, as a flying type, already immune to the toxic debris on the floor, right? So uh, it was uh, not necessarily worried about what Glamora was able to set up. But the Palm Puff brings Iron Hands back up to full, but we're kind of in the same boat as game one of can this Iron Hands Amoongus do enough damage to a boosted Dondozo? The thing is now though, since there hasn't been the Trastalization on Chongjin's end, he can be pressuring with these electric type moves into the Dondozo. If you force the Trastalization out, you do have that Fluttermane in the back. Yes, its energy is spent, but if you could be doing just enough damage at this point or force the Trastalization, maybe it can do enough as we will see the water type trasalization coming out onto the iron hands instead this time make sure that it's not going to be taking too much damage from these earthquakes or it's not going to be taking much from the wave crash that is going to then be the earthquake look how well these pokemon take the hit and the volt switch that was a lot of damage that's and the a critical hit yeah that's a that's a lot of damage the volt switch was doing more damage than you know the the drain punches were before so thanks to that critical hit and this is actually huge because you get switch priority into fluttermane on this turn and now if the moongus we're going to see its attack here goes for the spore and dondozo has to be put asleep next turn that is a free pollen puff to heal up your own fluttermane and now dondozo's in the tough spot of you know of being at half health essentially and you can take a i don't know how many moon blasts you can take i don't think many at this point, you can't be getting additional leftovers recovery while protecting and not taking the damage. And the Pollen Puffs to have that longevity is going to be so nice at this point. So Fantastic Volt Switch and board positioning coming up from Chongjin's end to really be putting this board state to practice. Of course, that'll be the first mandatory turn to sleep is here starts the Moon Blasts. And there you see it brought down into the red at a point that even if he's able to protect the next turn, Leftovers Recovery will not be enough to save this Don Dozo. So it might be just something you go for in, in general, just to protect to have a little more poison uh, rack up onto the Fluttermane. But of course, Amoongus is right there to heal up its partner whenever it wants with the Pollen Puff. Yeah, which is really nice, being able to take advantage of these sleep turns. The fact that nothing can be coming your way as the Dondozo will take the second turn of sleep. Now the Moonblast firing, Dondozo finally dealt with. 
Dozo is down, and Amoongus is free to heal up its teammate if it wants. No, instead, knowing that it would be knocked out, the Spore goes into the Tatsugiri as it comes out of Dondozo. So, Philip has lost his main win condition in Dondozo, and then that Choice Scarf, Tatsugiri, is already put to sleep before it can even do anything. All he has left is this half-health Glamora as well. I think Chungjin has put himself into a great position there in game two. Yeah, being able to take the knockout onto the Dondozo as the Tatsugiri is forced to come out onto the field and fend for itself and getting that spore into that slot, absolutely fantastic. You crave for moments that you could be having it timed out such as that. And now that it's asleep and has to be taking a turn of sleep, this is a tough spot. You do still have that more in the back and you have the potential to try and terrestrialize with the Tatsugiri to make sure you're not feeling, getting too much damage dealt to you by the time that you can hopefully wake up because the Tatsugiri is definitely not a Pokemon to be quite so disrespected in this Dondosa Tatsugiri combination. It is Terra Steel Tatsugiri already asleep. I wonder, fascinating, it's able to change its typing while asleep. I wonder right? how more works out in that <laughs> situation. But we know it's not going to get an attack off. It's the first turn of sleep for the Tatsugiri. And the spiky shield comes out here on this turn. So no damage on Phillips. And that's, Boomba still does some pretty solid damage considering that it's a steel type. Can't put the Glamora to sleep thanks to the Spiky Shield on that turn. But I think it's somewhat, unless this Tachigiri can wreak havoc with a, a, a wake up in muddy water on this next turn, I'm not sure what Philip has left in the tank. Well, you have to start hoping for that uh, first or wake up because that's about it. If the Tatsugiri is not waking up, it looks like it might just be sushi and lights out and going into this game three. So if you do wake up, I mean, this is the Tatsugiri with the choice scarf. So it isn't that focus fan set, the focus sash set. So that wake up, it's going to be huge to start things off. That'll be the icy win. And is the speed drop here. That will lower both of Chung Jun's Pokemon speed by one stage. How is this Glamora trained? It is trained to be faster at plus or minus one, I should say, to the Flutterman, but he doesn't target Flutterman. Instead, targets down the Amoogus to knock it out. Those spores were too annoying. Glamora hangs on at three HP, and Flutterman's gonna take even more toxic poison damage. So at the end of next turn, Fluttermane go, will go down. Chungjin bringing his Iron Hands back in at this slot. You know, it's already poisoned. You might as well go for the fake out into the, the 3 HP Glamora, but, you know, Tatsugiri waking up there was crucial. 100%. It all starts with the Tatsugiri wake up. The fact that there is the Iron Hands that was in the back, well, that does make things a little bit difficult because the Glamora, you can just imagine, is going to be... Just absolutely toast this time around. And it'll just be the Tatsugiri that could at this point. Having the Steel Terrasalization means it's so good up against the Fluttermane, but it's not going to be faring quite as well going up against the Drain Punches that the Iron Hands can offer. So a little bit of a up situation at that point. Might as well try and take one out. Spiky Shield for that little bit additional damage potential if the Faco does go here. Yeah, if it, it's different properties, then Protect. If you hit into a Spiky Shield, you actually hurt yourself as you win crucially connecting on to the flutter main there so it does knock out there is that five percent chance i see when misses everybody it dreads that five percenter but drain punch going towards tatsugiri as a steel type now means it's super effective and iron hands will recover up some hp that it loses from poison every single turn now tatsugiri is down in this one-on-one -on -one scenario against the three hp on the, uh, it's gonna be a tough road for Glamora, unless maybe you get a critical hit, but remember, Iron Hands has an Assault Vest, so pretty good at taking special attacks. Yeah, and just eyeing up this attempt at this double protect, so you can start dealing a little bit more damage. It is gonna get it, though. So this is gonna be damage dealt with a recoil from hitting into the protect, potentially, but no, Volt Switch instead. Since it is a special attack, not going to be taking additional damage, just that normal damage from the poison. And that's really smart from Chungjin because any amount of damage at this point is enough to take down a 3 HP Glamora. No reason to go for anything strong there. But no critical hit means Iron Hand hangs on and the Volt Switch will take Glamora out. And we will be headed towards a Game 3 in this matchup between China and Poland. 
absolutely fantastic match coming out. I think in this game three, that'll be the biggest thing to be looking out for. Oops, and as we will see the same lead coming out at least over on one end of the field. Yeah, so Chungjin with the Iron Hands, Blood Main lead on his side. And Philip deciding at least switching Iron Hands towards the Fluttermane for this lead. But Kumora is still there trying to be a pesky little poison Pokemon that puts uh, everybody in uh, in a precarious spot if the, the toxic <laughs> starts to add up. And I like this adjustment because in that game one, notably that first turn, the Iron Hands was not having a good time. And a Shadow Ball right away. No Terrestrialization event will be doing a lot of damage. Now though, it's gonna have to take a Shadow Ball <laughs> in return. Just trading the hits, and notably, because there is that lack of the tree specs over on Phillips' end, not going to deal the same amount of damage at Jun's can. The double up, though, will be enough that both of the Flutter mains get traded. Both Flutters are down, and when you can say that is a one-for-one -one trade technically, that's actually much better for Philip in this spot, as there is no longer a fairy type that would deter Dondozo from switching or terrestrializing into its dragon typing. So Chungjin does get the free switch from Iron Hands clicking Volt switch on that turn into Amoongus, but as does Philip get a free switch to Dondozo. I always get scared when I don't see the Flutter main terrestrialize in front of the other Flutter main, but it was really wise to not actually spend that Tura, considering there was just the double up with the Sludge Bomb to follow up. So kind of seemed a little bit of unavoidable at this stage. Now Lander is hitting the field. It will be getting that intensity down and it's not gonna be KO'd right away onto entry. So now it's the point, do we want to see the Tatsugiri combination swap in or is it just gonna be a solo dozer for now? You're gonna to have to wait and see, and you might not, if you're on Phillips End, you might want to keep Chungjin guessing every turn instead of immediately swapping in Tatsugiri, which is what he has done the last two games. So, could condition your opponent into thinking the Tatsugiri switch in will come and then you don't go for it. Remember, neither neither of Chungjin's Pokemon are poisoned right now. One, because Moonies is a poison type, and later it's just switched onto the field. So, you haven't even gotten too much effectiveness out of. Glamora's ability yet and it's toxic debris to poison things so might be the call on Phillips and then he does not switch out yet for now we'll just terrestrialize Dondozo into a dragon type making everything be much less effective into this Dondozo since there's no fairies around but Landorus will U-turn into that slot not caring about the damage more about its switch potential into a free partner in the back and also trying to stack intimidates for later yeah, being able to at least stop what the Dondozo wants to be doing can be really, really nice. Though it might be a little bit of an uphill battle considering the fact there is the order up and this is going to be the order up that boosts the attack later on once we get to that point. Now the Glamora just going to go on to the offensive. If there is the potential of getting this Amoongus eliminated from play sooner rather than later, that can be absolutely huge, but no commander boost so far. This can be doing so little damage. So the Amoongus has this free opportunity to score. That is the trade-off you take. If you don't switch Tachigiri in, Dondozo is not as much of a physical threat as it would be after that commander ability boosting its attacks there. So I like the Glamour staying on here because as we saw, it actually can kind of check this Amoongus pretty well uh, being, by being a two-hit KO with the Sludge Bomb. Yeah, and not having that swap to Tatsugiri, so you do have this option of a secondary attacker at this point in case something did go to sleep, is definitely something that is nice. And now we're going to see something that we don't get to see quite as often. It'll be the Dondozo swapping out, bringing Tatsugiri into its place. This can be a little bit scary, because if you lose that Tatsugiri, you are losing your potential to get that commander boost later down the road. But it'll be a swap coming out on Chongchun's end as well. And the Landers goes into that Amoongus slot, so Amoongus will recover some of its HP thanks to its Regenerator ability. And depending on how much it recovers, it means that a future Sludge Bomb into that slot might not be enough for the knockout. But who needs Toxic Debris when Sludge Bomb on the switch in can just net you the poison anyway? And there's the Drain Punch from Tatsugiri, or excuse me, onto the Tatsugiri, bringing it down into the red really low. Now you kind of... You, you kind of have to bring Dondozo in just to keep Tatsugiri alive, right? You would think, but 
hey, if you're gonna be valuing getting this damage out, getting potentially this KO or this Muddy Water of Agents, it could be so crucial. So, talk about the fact that the Sondos and Tatsugiri can be a little bit more of a linear team, but when we see it deviate from this game plan, it sometimes can catch your opponent off guard in a way that can be setting you up for later, especially if it is going to be maybe just a bit more of a stall tactic for that Dondozo down the line. But we will see instead that Glamora be switching out, so ignore that. Dondozo joining the field. It'll get its commander boost after all. We have plus two to all of its stats for the Dondozo. It is asleep, however, so just be make sure these next couple of turns, if Philip does not wake up, he's going to be taking a lot of damage. But the Drain Punch, if it goes into the Tachigiri slot like it did the previous turn, it would fail or say the U-turn is going to avoid. So Landorus does not get to switch out for free. That's crucial because Chungjin could have brought his Amoongus back onto the field to have his Spore ready whenever. Yeah, if that was the Tatsugiri sticking in, that would have been a Tatsugiri. That was done with, and the swap over on the other end. That's going to be the poison just dealing with this Landorus. Just a little bit, little bit more. And your Intimidator stuck on the field now with the Amoongus hidden in the back. So, sure, we are in a position where this Dondozo is asleep. Now you can go for that reposition, but this Dondozo at this point can't be waking up at any time. Yeah, that's the issue is that... Last turn, you knew Dondozo was not going to wake up. This turn, there is a chance to wake up and really punish this Amoongus switch in with either an order up or even going for an earthquake onto the Iron Hands slot there. But no, Dondozo will stay asleep. Drain Punch will do minimal damage, but fortunately for Chungjin, he brings his Amoongus in for free. Which is super, super nice. So now you can be sitting there Firing off a spore as soon as this Dondozo does wake up and making sure that your Iron Hand, despite the fact is as little damage as it's been dealing, can at least be staying safe with that Pollen Puff recovery to make sure it has more opportunities to be firing off those Drain Punches to just try and keep chipping away at this Dondozo while he can. But instead, it'll be swapping out. Gonna value that Intimidate drop onto it a little bit more. Yeah, the Amoongus switching into Landers. As you mentioned, there's Intimidate. The other factor is Chungjin does have the Volt Turn abilities there with Volt Switch and U-Turn. So Volt Switch, if he wants, onto the Dondozo slot. Does allow Amoongus to stay on the field on the turn, but he's not going to go for that. Instead, right now, it is Terra Water Iron Hands to drop that Earthquake Weakness. Dondozo finally waking up. Order Up is the attack of choice, charging the gate that Intimidate by getting another attack boost. And Landorus will switch, or get knocked out here, I should say. Thanks to that critical hit, I don't think it mattered too much since Dondozo was already really strong. Landorus goes down. Drain Punch brings Dondozo down to under half HP, but now Amoongus can get back onto the field for free and go for a Spore. And being able to get that recovery with Regenerator with the Amoongus swapping out before, so sure. The Dondozo is back where it was thanks to that order up, but being able to see have the Amoongus back up to pretty much full is super, super nice because you want to make sure that you're not going to be knocked out with that order up when the Spore and just only the Sondozo out could be a potential going now into this. It will just be the Protect at this point, though. I feel like we could see quite a few of these on the horizon. Yeah, definitely in for the long haul. Just because this match has gone on for a while does not mean it's close to ending. It should be a very exciting conclusion in our Game 3 between these two teams. Remember, there's so much on the line for Poland right now. If Chungjin and China come away with the win in this match, they'll be up 5 nothing in the total week count and win the week, regardless of how the rest of the games play out. So it's really crucial for the hopes of Poland if Philip can come back in this game and Dondozo keep their hopes alive. Order up goes into Moon Oops, and it brings it down under half HP. There's no more regenerator access at this point. That is what Amoongus is going to stay at, meaning another order up would knock it out. Spore, however, will put Dondozo to sleep next turn. And just kind of looking at looking at how much damage Drain Punch is doing every turn, it's kind of negated by leftovers for the most part. I'd say it's, it's a little bit net neutral positive towards Drain Punch, but not a lot. That's the problem here at this point. But now we're going to see the Dondozo. That'll be the first turn of sleep. But again, as this is just going to be that cycle, Drain Punch slowly but surely. There's the Palm Puff follow up as well, bringing Dondozo down into 
the red and what Changjun really needs right now is a max three turns of sleep from Dondozo before it can get any attacks off or even just trying to click protect as well like I think in this spot you, there's definitely merit between the arguments of trying to wake up and protect or wake up and go for the earthquake neither one will happen however as Philip stays asleep and the drain punch takes it out with the critical hit saying I don't care about commander I care about winning this game and Chung Jun Ping will beat Philip in check two to one here in week five of the world cup for team China I mean, at this point, that critical hit just saving us from this world. Uh, all right, now we're going to see the protect. All right, now we're going to see some leftovers recovery. Now we'll see that drain punch. Being able to get it over with, I feel like it was going to be the writing on the wall at this point, as now the Glamora hitting the field, going up against an Assault Vest Pokemon and an Amoongus that necessarily, you know, I can go into Oh, Slug Bomb is enough for a knockout, actually, into Amoongus, though. So yeah, but... If you're looking into the Iron Hands. That's true, that's true. I just, you know, I'm just, just <laughs> trying to think of things on, on Phillips and this Glamora. I totally forgot the, the Glamora back in the back. I thought he got knocked out earlier. Because usually when you're down to Don Dozo, kind of lost his Pokemon before. But, um, yeah, the Spore goes into Spiky Shield at this point. Iron Hands is really healthy and has the Assault Vest like you're staying. So should be able to take a couple of Sludge Bombs. Yeah, that is definitely one of the nice things about that is the first sludge bomb into the Amoongus, as you called out, is going to be more than enough to be picking up this KO. But now it'll be the 1v1 versus the Iron Hands that's just dealing so much damage. It's going to be recovering and then boosting that Assault Vest. There's not really going to be a way to be stalling this out at this point. Right, and the Toxic Debris doesn't matter anymore since they're down to their last Pokemon each. So that's a full HP Iron Hands with an Assault Vest. I think even without... The AV, the Sludge Bomb, would not be enough to knock it out there. Yeah, seeing how minimal damage that does. Drain Punch finally taking it down there. And sure, Glamora lasted longer than Dondozo, but the result was still the same of Chungjin bringing Team China to victory, not just in this matchup, in this best of three, but for the week as a whole. China has the victory over Poland for the World Cup. Yeah, and being able to do that after down the deficits of that first game with the Dondos and Tatsugiri doing, well, what it has been since the release of Scarlet and Violet, but being able to find great ways to be moving around that. I was worried in that game three with the trade onto the Flutter Mains to start things off. I mean, considering how important it was in that game too, but being able to find ways around that was really, really well done, well played.